Welcome to Cardiac Academy. In this video, we're going to continue our discussions in the difference between an escape beat and an escape rhythm. And by the end of the video, we're going to finish up strong by doing some practice questions. So without further delay, let's get into it. Okay, so let's go into each one of them. So first, we're going to discuss uh, atrial escape beat versus an atrial escape rhythm. So as we were saying, if the SA note starts, uh, stops firing, then the second fastest one is going to take over. So here we can see a normal P wave. So this is generated at the SA node. Then we see a pause. And then we see a new P wave pop up. So you see this P wave is different from the previous one. So that means that that depolarization is being ori originated from somewhere else in the, SA, uh, in the atria. So the first one is at the level of the SA node. This one is still at the level of the atria, but not at the SA node. So you see the first P wave is upright, and then the second P wave is, uh, inver is re uh, inverted. So that tells us that after this sinus pause, then so the depolarization was originated from somewhere else. Okay, very good. And if you notice, it's a single beat. Then on the third beat, we go back to a normal. It's the same morphology as the first one. Now in the example below, we can see a normal depolarization. We see the same morphology in the first P wave. Then we see a pause, again, sinus arrest. And then that same um, P wave from the example above starts generating uh, depolarization. However, this time around, it's not a single beat, it continues. So here we only see, uh, we actually see three, ones, three depolarizations. So that's the next point I wanted to make. So for you to be able to call it uh, uh, atrial escape rhythm, it has to be more than three beats. So the first example is a atrial escape beat. And the second example is an atrial escape rhythm. Very good. Let's see our next example. So now we discuss the atrial escape beats. Now we're gonna dis discuss the junctional escape beats. And earlier we said that the easiest way to identify those is by the absence of P waves. So first we see here normal uh, sinus depolarization, we see a P wave and then a QRS, but then we see that in the following beat there, are, there is no P wave. So that means that this depolarization um, was not originated at the level of the atria. So it was originated at the level of the AV node. How do, I, how do I know it was at the level of the AV node and not at the level of the ventricles? So two ways. First, the, the rate is gonna be faster than at the level of the ventricle, and the QRS is gonna be, uh, not, it's gonna be narrow, not wide. If it was from the ventricle, it's gonna be wide. At the AV node, it's gonna be narrow. So these, since it's a, a single beat, it goes back to the normal sinus rhythm. This is a junctional escape beat. Then in the following example, again, we see the P wave. But then we see another depolarization without P waves. And let's just uh, imagine there are three consecutive beats at least. So that would be um, junctional escape rhythm. So junctional escape rhythm. And as we said, the rate is gonna be much slower so we can calculate it. So 300, 150, 100, 75, 60 and 50. So 50 bits per minute, which is at, this, at the rate that we see on junctional escape beats or escape rhythms. So 40 to 60 is normal. In this example, we're seeing 50 beats per minute. 
Another important thing uh, to mention is that the junctional escape beat is the most common uh, escape uh, beat that you can see of all, okay? So it's the most common of the escape rhythms. Okay. So sometimes you will see some rhythm strips in which you won't see P waves. You won't, you're, like in this example, no P waves. So that's, that tells us, tells us that it's junctional. However, it's faster than usual. So we said that the normal uh, junctional escape rhythm is 40 to 60. However, this one, let's calculate it. It's 300, 150, 100, 100 beats per minute. So it's faster than it's supposed to be. So in this case, it's still a, it's still a junctional rhythm. However, it's an accelerated junctional rhythm. So accelerated junctional. Rhythm. So it's still junctional, faster than usual, accelerated junctional rhythm. Okay, very good. Another thing to mention. So normally, the depolarization occurs at the SA node. So that means it goes from right to left, right to left, in this fashion. And from the upper area of the heart to the lower area. So looking at lead two, let's draw that for you. Lead two, a normal depolarization would look like this. So we see P, Q, R, S, T. That's normal. However, since this depolarization is originating at the level of the uh, AV node, so that means that the depolarization is still going in this direction. I'm going to do it in blue. However, since the depolarization originated at the level of the AV node, part of that depolarization is going to go back. It's going to look to the other way. So if we look at lead two, again, sometimes you can see retrograde P waves because the depolarization is going back. So let's see how that looks. So again in blue. So no P wave, Q, R, S. And here we can see an inverted P wave. And T. Because as we said, the depolarization towards lead two is going forward as it's supposed to, but there's also a depolarization going away from lead two, so it's going to be a negative deflection. In one of our previous videos, we discussed that electrodes, when the depolarization is coming, is coming towards them, will record a positive deflection, but when it's going away from them, will record a negative deflection. So that's why the P wave is going to look inverted. Now let's say we're looking at <clears throat> the other lead that is uh, against it, that would be AVR, AVR. So at lead AVR, it would look like this. So you're going to see a P wave, but then instead of seeing an R wave, you're going to see a dominant S wave, a small R wave. You'll see a uh, upright P wave, and then you will see an inverted T wave. So this should look like a mirror image. Why? Because it's the other lead that is looking at the other side. So um, this depolarization is going towards it. So it's gonna defl uh, it's gonna record a positive P wave because the depolarization coming is going towards it. Okay. Very good. Last example. So here we're seeing again a normal P wave, so normal depolarization. And then we see a sinus arrest. And this depolarization, there is no P waves. So it's not being originated at the level of the atria. However, when we look at the, at the QRS, we see that it's wide. It's a wide QRS. 
So that means that it's not a level, the level of the atria, it's not at the level of the AV node because the the, the QRS complex is going to be wide. So that means it's coming from the level of the ventricles. And we can also see that it's becoming much more bradycardic. So at the level of the ventricle is 30 to 45. We can count that. We, let's calculate. So 300, 150, 100, 75, um, 60, 50, 43, 38. So it's, got, it's becoming pretty, pretty cardiac as we see. And um, we see that no P wave and a YQRS. So this is a ventricular depolarization or, the, or ventricular escape beat. Or in this case, actually rhythm. Because there's another one here. And let's, let's assume that there's a third one. So it will be a ventricular escape rhythm. And in the example below, we can see that. So, no P waves, white QRS, it's white here. And uh, more than three beats. And these are called you can call them ventricular escape rhythm, but it's, it's also known as ideal ventricular escape rhythm. Okay, very good. So, so far we discussed um, escape beats, which would happen late after a sinus arrest. Sometimes they can happen early. These are called, called premature beats. So, as just like the escape beats, they can happen at the level of the atria or, or happen at the level of the, of the AV node called junctional premature beats. Um, and these are classified as supraventricular arrhythmias, which is going to be the topic for the next uh, video. But before we do that, let's do some practice sessions. Okay, my friends, let's practice a little. So let's look at this telemetry um, and let's try to um, assess the rhythm. So remember, follow those five questions that we have to answer ourselves whenever we assess rhythm. So the first question, are there any P waves? And look at the rhythm strip, we can see that yes, there are P waves. Then, is there a P wave for every QRS? We look, yes, there is a P wave for every QRS in a one-to-one -one fashion. After that, we ask, is the rhythm um, uh, regular or irregular, we look at the distance between R wave and R wave, and we, can, and we can see that it's the same distance, so yes, it's a regular rhythm. Then, is the QRS narrow or wide? It's narrow. And finally, is the PR interval prolonged? And it's not, it's normal. So, we can conclude this is a normal sinus rhythm. Okay, next one. All right, same, same five questions. So we look and is there any P waves? Yes, we see P waves. Is there a P wave for every QRS in a one-to-one -one fashion? And we can see that yes, there's a P wave for every QRS in a one-to-one -one fashion. After that, is the rhythm regular or irregular? And we look at the distance between QRS and QRS and we can see that actually it's, a, it's slightly irregular. Um, there is some variation in the distance between, between QRS and QRS, okay? So, but we see that there are P waves and the P waves have shared the same morphology. Um, and to answer the rest of the questions, uh, is the QRS narrow or wide? It's narrow. And is the PR interval prolonged or not? It's not prolonged. So we have a slightly irregular rhythm with normal P waves, same morphology. So what is this? This is sinus arrhythmia. Very good. Next example. So again, remember to always follow the five questions you need to answer. That way it's going to be easier. So first question, are there any P waves? Yes, we see there, there are P waves. Is there, is there a P wave for every QRS in a one-to-one -one fashion? And we look at the rhythm strip and yes, there is. After that, is the QRS wide or narrow, which is a narrow QRS. Then 
is the rhythm regular or irregular? And we look at the distance between um, R wave and R wave. And remember that when we say distance, what we really mean is the heart rate, if there's any variation in the heart rate. And in this case, we see there is no variation. However, we notice that the heart rate is kind of bradycardic, it's 50 beats per minute. And earlier we said that the SA node has an intrinsic heart rate of 60 to 100. So in this case, we can see it's around 50, it's 50. So just to finish all five questions, the last remaining question is, is the PR interval prolonged? And it's not. So we can conclude that this is a sinus rhythm because we see normal P waves before every QRS. However, it's lower than, norm than normal. So this will be a sinus bradycardia. Okay, very good. Next example. Okay. So again, let's go through the five questions. First question, are there any P waves? And we see, no, there is no P waves. So next will be, is there a P wave for every QRS? So there's no P waves. So we can't really answer that question. Next question is the, if the uh, QRS narrow or wide, and we see it's a narrow QRS. Is the PR interval prolonged? We can't really answer that. And the final question is, is the rhythm regular or irregular? And we can see it's regular. Now, there's no P waves, so that tells us that the depolarization is not originating from the atria. So it has to be either the AV node or the ventricles. So how do we tell them apart? So we tell them apart not only by looking at the heart rate, which we see is 52, um, but we also tell them apart by the morphology of the QRS. So if it is wide, it's from the ventricle. If it is narrow, it's a junctional um, uh, escape rhythm. So in this case, we can see that the heart rate is 52 and the um, junctional escape rhythm have an intrinsic heart rate of 40 to 60. So it's in that range and it's a narrow QRS. So this is a junctional escape rhythm. Okay, very good. Next one. All right. So again, P waves? No, there are not, no P waves. Uh, so we can't really tell what, what, that there is a P wave for every QRS because there's no P waves. Um, after that, is the QRS narrow or wide? We can see it's a wide QRS. Um, is the rhythm regular or irregular? We see it's very regular. Um, however, it's very bradycardic. So the heart rate is 34. And earlier we said that the ventricular um, intrinsic heart rate, it's 30 to 45, so it's in that range. And we see there's a wide QRS. Um, so just with that alone, we can conclude that this is a ventricular uh, escape rhythm, also known as an ideal ventricular escape rhythm. All right, my friends, we reached the end of our video. Um, remember to keep practicing at home. Go through the five questions, and that way it's gonna be easier to recognize any rhythm. So remember, don't be erratic, be systematic. And that way, there's not going to be any EKG you, you're not going to be able to tackle. So, as always, I hope you like our video, and I'll see you on the next one. Node, because there are normal P waves. Uh, there's a P wave for every QRS. Um, they share the same morphology. The rhythm is regular. You'll need to unlock your Mac first. I don't know where that came from, but um, I'm going to have to start all over.